Welcome back to the Dry Fasting Club. Today we're going to be talking about the anterior mid cingulate cortex and how you can improve it through fasting specifically. The anterior mid cingulate cortex or the AMCC is basically a part of the brain that is involved in decision making, emotion regulation, and especially willpower. So willpower and tenacity are sort of interchangeable terms and I hope that you can agree with me that improving your willpower will most likely correlate to improving many aspects of your life. So getting being able to get through tough situations and pushing through is definitely a skill that I think most of us would like to improve or have it better regulated. Another thing that... I want to talk about with the AMCC specifically is the correlation to becoming a super ager. So I do believe this is a goal for most people and becoming a super ager basically means that you age well. You don't want to be uh, one of the statistics of, of getting old and basically having mental declines and having problems with thinking like Alzheimer's. And I guess a correlation to a super ager is also with depression and emotional strength. So being happier and just leading a better life. So why am I talking about the AMCC in general? Well, I ran across it or rather it was brought to my attention by Andrew Huberman from the Huberman Labs podcast. If you listen to that, maybe you remember an episode where he brought it up sort of like a side note, I think. Another researcher sent him a question and he was answering it. And it got me thinking how we know that the AMCC is stimulated and improves through things like exercise and doing hard tasks. And obviously the correlation to fasting is intense. And I don't think many people have made that link. All in all, the anterior mid cingulate cortex is a powerful indi indicator that you'll become a super ager. Other than that, if you're younger and you don't care too much about that because it's in the distant future, just having the ability to get your work done, go to the gym, do that hard task is something that can infinitely improve your life. So let's talk about the AMCC and how we can truly make great strides at improving it. So what are the most common ways to improve the anterior mid cingulate cortex? And this is something that everybody really knows at, at an intrinsic level. We know that mental exercise, physical activity, and meditation are obvious ways to improve your willpower uh, and mental strength. Duh. But if you haven't made that correlation, obviously regular mental exercise is going to improve your brain function and with that your AMCC and we already know that physical activity and meditation are fantastic tools for the brain so obviously there's going to be some sort of some translation into the AMCC physical activity obviously increases blood flow to the brain and we already have thousands of papers on how physical activity actually benefits mental well-being and it looks like the harder the physical exercise, the stronger the impact on the anterior mid cingulate cortex. So if you are actually exercising using high weights and making it almost uncomfortable, that will translate to more benefits. So first off, what I'm thinking of is maybe working out without music, for example. We all use music as a crutch, sort of like a dopamine upregulator and... If you make the workout as uncomfortable as possible and you still push through, it looks like the benefits keep stacking. However, obviously, if that's going to make you hate the workouts and lower the amount of times you actually work out, maybe that's not the best option in this case. Now, meditation. I am a huge fan of meditation and we can go so deep on it. And if you've never done meditation, I really highly recommend it. Even if you are a beginner and you kind of don't know what you're doing, just being able to sit down with your breath and really begin the journey of learning how to focus on the breath and focus your mind is already going to change your life. But the deeper you get into meditation, you can really unlock some powerful levels that go into neurotransmitter, parasympathetic, endorphin release, and so much more. So it's a skill that you don't really know how much it benefits you until you really just keep on doing it and start unlocking deeper and deeper secrets. 
obviously the more you do meditate the more of an impact you're also going to have on your amcc which is a huge win in my books now let's move on to the most powerful ways to increase the anterior midcingulate cortex uh obviously this is probably why you're even listening to this episode and let's just get straight to it in my opinion the most powerful ways to increase the amcc will be fasting sauna and ice baths and the reason is these are potentially some of the hardest things for a human being to do hardest things that elicit beneficial effects so they are hormetic stressors to the maximum degree fasting is calorie restriction it's obviously something that we don't want our whole our whole evolution aims at not putting us into a calorie restriction situation even though it's beneficial for us and then we have sauna and ice baths the two polar opposites heat stress and cold stress two things that as a regular human we run away from you know what's crazy it's kind of starting to paint a picture that most of the things that are situations that we run away from we should really learn to try to harness them and maybe that's why meditation and getting to know ourselves a little bit deeper can kind of strengthen those pathways in the brain but obviously what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and in this case keep pushing through and you're going to build that willpower muscle which is directly linked to the anterior mid cingulate cortex now if you're a little bit crazy you might start thinking why don't i mix this in and in fact it's very common to see people that are fasting and trying to dial in a really powerful fasting protocol they start to implement things into it with the sauna and ice baths obviously you don't have to do that and you can do them separately but there is a powerful synergistic effect of mixing all three of these for example, if you are dry fasting, you can increase that heat stress and dehydration stress by mixing them both. Obviously, I don't recommend this for beginners. This can be dangerous and you do need to take it step by step. But once you become accustomed to fasting or dry fasting and then accustomed to the sauna as well, mixing them together can take you to another level. Another thing when it comes to dry fasting is there's this thing called the dry fasting heat. Once you get into this world and experience the dry fasting heat, you'll see how much easier it is to actually introduce cold stress when you are in these stages. And the dry fasting heat is most commonly associated with going over three days of dry fasting. And it correlates to going past the acidotic crisis. Uh, increasing ketone production to such high levels that the body is actually creating a surplus of energy. That surplus comes from wanting to hydrate the body and having low levels of water. So the body actually goes pretty deep and has to start burning extra ketones to create more water. And with this, it goes above and beyond the calorie in, calorie out understanding of how our body works. We already know that fasting is probably one of the hardest things to do, even though a lot of people that fast kind of chase that ketosis high or that clear minded thinking. So they do kind of chase the fast. At the same time, I don't know anybody that truly enjoys fasting. It's still a very hard thing to do. And you do end up scrolling through food posts on social media the deeper you get into a fast. And if you get into a dry fast then you're scrolling pictures of beautiful glasses of water obviously this is going to help increase the amcc strength and through that i mean helping it grow and become thicker because the thickness of the anterior mid cingulate cortex is usually correlated to that extra willpower then we actually start seeing other benefits of fasting on brain health here we're just focusing on the amcc but we have things like improved synaptic plasticity through fasting. We know that BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotrophic factor, increases on a fast. Your growth hormone goes up. There's just so many benefits. So I'm going to term fasting as a speed hack for transformation when it comes to improving your willpower and tenacity. Obviously, what that means is that if you're trying to speed hack the anterior mid-singular cortex development, Fasting is probably going to be the key player. Now, how can you go above and beyond the fasting hack? That means stacking the hormetic stressors 
like we talked about the sauna and the ice baths. But what I want to focus on more is fasting and meditation. So I'm not going to go too deep into this, but fasting and there's actually papers on how fasting stimulates a transcendental meditation state. And there's a big correlation between ketosis and upregulating your parasympathetic nervous system. What that means is that we have, we enter a state of ketosis through fasting, obviously. And you can also enter this in a milder form on low calorie diet low carb diets so something like a zero carb diet and a lot of people do the carnivore diet to get this sense of calmness and lowering inflammation when you enter this ketosis state there's a correlation to a meditative state they're both in this parasympathetic world obviously putting them together you get to get a sort of synergistic action so i am a big proponent of meditating while you're fasting you're going to notice that as you meditate on a fast yes it can be hard because you get a little bit cranky you don't really want to do it but just try it if you can get through those first five minutes and really enter a slightly deeper meditation you're going to notice that on a fast it's almost like you get to skip a few levels so if you are a beginner to the world of meditation on a fast it's almost as if you get to jump six months of experience. It's almost as if you become a slightly more advanced meditator. It's really wild, and I really hope you get to try it out, and then let me know how it goes. Hopefully, I've explained a little bit about the AMCC, the anterior mid-cingulate cortex, and you have something that you can dig into a little bit deeper or maybe bring up in a conversation when you're talking to someone about fasting and its benefits. And before we go, uh, one of my last paragraphs here talks about strategies to boost the anterior mid cingulate cortex. Obviously, I've already mentioned that you can synergize this, but I do want to let you know that there are some people that experiment even more with mixing serotonin agonist psychedelic mushrooms with things like the sauna and dry fasting and to be honest the sauna and dry fasting combined is already a term or it's already known as death fasting and it was coined by this social media influencer called cole robinson who advocates for crazy things crazy diets he invented the snake diet if you've heard of that with the snake juice and he talks about death fasting. Obviously, the name implies you probably shouldn't do it, but it also tells you that some people do experiment with this. And the people who go even further, which I do not recommend unless you are a big risk taker and honestly, hopefully healthy, you'll mix in the benefits of, for example, psilocybin-induced neuronal plasticity and brain development so you do get a lot of brain benefits from microdosing or or properly following some sort of protocol when it comes to them while mixing in fasting to improve your synaptic plasticity and then also bringing in the sauna for its hormetic benefits and you mix all three in and you create like this ultimate iron man of willpower and tenacity growth I just wanted to bring that up because I thought it was very interesting and maybe someone listening to this is a min-maxer and it's something that they've been really looking for, but let's probably keep this in the back of our minds as just an interesting topic to sort of theory craft about. I don't think that this is good for most people, but if you end up trying it also, please let me know how it goes. I am a very very curious. Well, that's it for this discussion. Hopefully you've benefited from this information and you found it interesting. I hope the main takeaway is that fasting is such a powerful tool in general for our health, but also something that people don't take into consideration is the ability to improve your willpower, which will reshape your life. So remember, be responsible and as always, good luck on your healing journey. Thanks for sticking around. If you've dry fasted before, have any questions or requests for future topics, please leave them in the comments below. I always check the comments for inspiration and ideas. If you're looking for a chat or to set up your dry fasting plan, check out the dryfastingclub.com website and subscribe. 
you should also check out the Discord community where you can meet other new and experienced dry fasters. Remember, no two people are the same, so every fasting experience is unique. Thank you and good luck on your dry fasting journey.